amici e ben ritrovati. Hi friends and welcome back. So today we are going to talk about l'alfabeto, the alphabet, and uh, a few, quite a few actually, phonetic rules that are very very important for the Italian pronunciation. This is really important because uh, then we will use these rules also in order to learn new vocabulary and to learn grammar, etc. etc. So, first of all, um, during all my lessons until now, I have used uh, the British, the English way to pronounce letters, okay, in order to make it, make it clear for you. From now on, uh, I'll start, uh, uh, as much as possible, I started to use, to start using the Italian words to pronounce uh, letters, okay, to spell words. Obviously, the, the different letters are spelled in a different way, in Italian and in English. So today we are going to see the letters, first of all, the way we uh, we call them, actually, an example of uh, the, the words in which uh, we have that specific letter, specific or different or uh, irregular ways to use those letters, the letters that don't belong to the Italian alphabet, or maybe to the British alphabet, but we still use them and so we have another way to call them, and some specific sounds. Well, there's a lot to say, so let's get started immediately. So first of all, I, I will read now the alphabet all together so you can hear me and then we'll start explaining letter by letter, okay? Let's start. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, Z. These are Italian letters, okay? The way they are pronounced. Now, let's start from the very beginning, okay? Um, well, I've got a a very plain accent in Italian and so um, the way I pronounce things is basically the correct way, I mean it's uh, the, the way that uh, uh, the phonetic uh, uh, alphabet and the phonetic uh, um, rule would suggest us, okay, so uh, you can trust my pronunciation, <laughs> but anyway, if there are a few things that I pronounce in a different way, because I'm from the north of Italy, and so I could pronounce a few vowels in a different way, then I will say that to you. So the way you will, you hear that from, from me, uh, will be the correct one, the, 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 the standard one. Ah! One of the most common, maybe the most common vowel in Italy. A, as in aria. Aria means air, air, the air. A, okay, is a very open vowel, okay, it's not A or A, A as it is in English or air, it's A, 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 okay, pronunciation, phonetic alphabet is just like this, it's very easy. Aria. In this case we've got it twice at the beginning and at the end of the word. Aria. Easy. Second letter. B. B. So uh, in many different letters you will notice that we put an E, an e at, uh, but after the consonant uh, to pronounce it in the alphabet to give the spelling. So it's not B but it is B. B. Like in bene. Bene, bene, which means good or well, means well. We already talked about this word when we talked about courtesy phrases. Uh, how's it going? Okay, it's all right. Uh, va bene. Well, this is a case in which I would say bene, <coughs> while the correct pronunciation is bene, with an open e at the beginning. Bene. Anyway, the b is always the same. It's a normal b. Then, Something more difficult here, C. Uh, the C in Italian is pronounced C. 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 A, B, C. 
A, B, C. We use it also the three letters to say uh, the when you study something and uh, you are studying the basics, okay, the elementary level, we, we say we study the A, B, C. Okay, studiamo, we study la B, C, so the very beginning, because there are three letters, the first three letters of the alphabet. Well, anyway, C. Chi. This is the way we <coughs> write it, okay, in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Chi um, is the way we pronounce the letter, but then when we use it, most of the times it isn't pronounced chi, it is pronounced k, k, like a key. As in this word here, cane, cane, it's dog, okay, cane, it's not chane, it's cane, or again, house, it is casa, casa, k, casa, cane, you can see that, it is k, it's not ch. But anyway, there are situations when we actually pronounce the chi, like that, so chi actually, uh, we already talked about that in my first two lessons during greetings and courtesy phrases, but I'll repeat it again for you. When we have chi, and after the consonant, we've got E. So in English, it is I. Or E. In English, it is E. It is CHI or CHE. It's not KI or KE. There's a way to say that, but we'll see that later. CHI, CHE. Example, CHI in CHAO. CHAO, it's not CAO. It is ciao, okay, and certo, this is chi and e sound, certo, it means sure, okay, so, short resume, the letter chi, okay, is always pronounced k, like in cane, like, or in, in casa, as in cane, as in casa, okay, but it is pronounced actually chi when it is followed, okay, either by e or by e. In that case, it becomes chi or che, as in ciao or as in certo, okay, so we have two ways to pronounce chi, okay, the, 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 the consonant is called chi, but we are two ways to pronounce it, either k or ch, okay? It depends on what follows, okay? In every single case it is k, in these two cases with e, a, it is ch. Then, so, a, b, c, d, 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 again this e after the consonant, like for example in the word due, we talked about numbers, you remember? Due means two, okay? D, due, very simple. E, E, E. It's not E as in English. We mentioned this, this vowel before, after, okay, chi. We said chi, E, because it, we pronounce it E and not E, as in the word echo. Echo. Echo is the same in English, we don't have the H here, but it's the same meaning, okay? Or elefante, which is elephant, okay? E, elefante, echo, e. It is also e alone, just the vowel as it is, mean, it means and, okay? So even all alone, it's got a very strong meaning, it's very common. A, B, C, D, E. F, F. This is the first one of many consonants that are called in this way with the two e, okay, at the end, at the beginning and the end, okay, of the name of the letter, and the letter itself is doubled in the center, in the middle, okay, f, f, it's not pronounced f, it is f, f, like uh, as uh, as it, for example in the word fine means end, okay, fine, fine, f, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, 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 
This is the way it is written, okay, in the EPA, okay, in the EPA tab, EPA alphabet, so always international phonetic alphabet. This is the way it is written. The way it is pronounced is G, G. Now, the rule here for the G is exactly the same we mentioned before for CHI. It is absolutely the same. We call it G, but when we pronounce it, it is normally G, G, so it's a hard sound, okay, it's a mute sound. Like, for example, in the word GATTO, GATTO is cat, okay, GATTO, it's not GATTO, okay, it is G, 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 GATTO. But if we have got E or A after G, then it becomes G and J. It's exactly the same rule we mentioned before, exactly the same. We just shift, we just change uh, the G and we put the G, but that's exactly the same thing, okay? So we pronounce it G, but we pronounce, I'm sorry, we call it G, but we pronounce it G with two exceptions. When this G is followed by E or A. In this case, it's not G anymore, but it is G, J. Examples, gioco, gioco, it's game, okay, or play, I play, okay, gioco, it's not goco, because after the G I've got E, okay, gioco. We mentioned the word giorno, when we said buongiorno, giorno, also in this case, okay, we've got E after the G, so it's not gorno, it is giorno. Same goes for the E sound after the G, in, like in gesto, gesto is a gesture, gesture, I do with my hands, you say that we Italians, we make a lot of, of gestures when we are talking, we move our hands a lot now. So, um, this is gesto, you see there is a E sound after the G, and so it's not G gesto, it is gesto, okay? So, same as before, G normally pronounced as G, but if there is E or E after the G, then it becomes G. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. How can we pronounce, pronounce the H? Akka. 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 Now, the H letter is very important in Italian. It plays a very, very important role. It is mute, okay? It is completely mute. Uh, you don't pronounce it. Um, well, obviously we use also in Italian a lot of English words like, for example, hotel or habitat or other words like that. So we should actually pronounce it, but most of the times we don't. Okay, well, that's our fault. Anyway, we use it a lot. This H is very important from a um, grammar point of view. Uh, for example, we mentioned in my uh, video about uh, uh, the verb to have that uh, the H, okay, uh, is necessary to conjugate the verb, for example, okay, it's absolutely necessary. If you don't put the H, then the meaning of the word is completely different, even if we don't pronounce that H, but we have to write it down, absolutely. Uh, but there is, there is also a rule concerning pronunciation and concerning H, which is very, very important. And it is connected, it is linked to the rule of G and C that we have already mentioned. Okay, so you know those rules now. Now, uh, think about that for a moment. We said, uh, let's talk about C, okay, but it, that's the same if we talk about G, it's the same. We said that the C, okay, is, on, is usually C, casa, cane, etc, etc. If we have E and A, it becomes C or C. Good, we are there. But what if I want to say K or K? So to, we want to have a K sound with E and A. What can we do? Because the C changes, it becomes C, C. How can I transform that chi che in ki k? 
che. I use the H. I put the H between the C or the G, that's the same, and the vowel E or A. I put it in the middle and the sound of the consonant becomes hard K or G, okay? And so it becomes K, K or G, G and it's not C, C or G, G anymore. So it goes back to uh, the original <laughs> nature of that consonant, which is K and G. Okay, so the H breaks the rule, breaks the rule that connects G, G with E, A. Okay, and that make that melts them into another sound, which is C, C, G, G. It breaks, okay, the rule, the H in the middle, and the consonant goes back to its previous pronunciation, so K and G. Examples? Yeah, let's start with the chi. Chi means who, okay, chi, you notice here it's a chi sound and a yi, but in the middle I've got an h, so I won't pronounce this chi, which exists, but it's another word without h, it is chi. Same goes for che, che cosa, what, che cosa, it means what, che is our chi and a, but in the middle I've got an h, h, and so it's not che, it is che. Same goes for the G, exactly the same thing uh, for the little animal that sleeps all the time. Giro, giro, it's not giro. Giro means another thing, means turn. Okay, g. Or gepardo, ge, gepardo, gepardo. Okay, it's not gepardo. Mm? So this is what the H, the okay, is meant for in Italian pronunciation, to break, okay, that sound that is created with, with C and G and E and A. Obviously, it's not the only use, okay, of H. We've got a lot of other uses, for example, in the conjugation of the verbs. This is very important, absolutely, but we'll see that, okay, step by step, talking about grammar. Today we're talking about phonetics. A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, E, this is easy, E, okay, it's not pronounced I, it's pronounced E, and we use it to say I, okay, first person singular, io, io. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, L, 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 you go back to uh, this way of calling the letter similar to F, L, you see you have E, beginning and the end and in the middle of the name of the letter you got that letter that is doubled L, L, like for example in the word luogo, luogo which means place, luogo, L, L, you put the uh, top of your, of your tongue, okay, just uh, behind your front teeth, okay, L, luogo. Then, uh, yes, L, then I'll move away and you will be able to screenshot my, 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 my whiteboard all together, so don't worry about that. Um, then, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, 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 as in the word mamma. Mom, okay, it's not the same in all languages. Okay, mamma. In mamma, we've got the M three times, okay, at the very beginning, and then we have a double M. Do you remember what we said about the double consonant? Mm, I repeat it again. When we have a double consonant in an Italian word, we have to make it longer, okay? Also stronger, but specifically longer. So I have to keep it longer almost twice as a single consonant. I have to stay there, okay, for a moment. I won't say mama, okay, I won't say mama. It's, it's a, something that uh, foreign people always do because they tend to ignore, okay, a double consonant because, okay, they are the same, two M's, so they are the same. No, it is important to, to 
pronounce that double consonant. I have to stay there for a moment with my voice. Mamma, mamma. With the M, M sound, which is M, it's easy because I can make it longer. Mamma. Well, not that long, actually. <laughs> I was emphasizing that for you. But the correct pronunciation is mamma. Mamma. Can you hear it is different from mama? Mama is wrong. Mamma is correct. Mamma. N. Okay. N. N. In Italian, the word is nonna. It's very similar. It means grandmother. Okay. Granny. Nonna. Nonna. Can you hear the same rule of the double consonant? Nonna. Nonna, count. It's, it's like a sort of a, well, when you make music, okay, and in this case each, each, each letter um, has got a specific length, okay. When you uh, arrive to a double consonant you have to double that length, okay. It's not nona, which means, it means, it means something else. Nona with just one N, it means the ninth. Okay, the ninth, it's an ordinal number. But with two N's, two N, it means granny. Okay, nonna, nonna. Hmm? A, B, C, D, A, F, G. I repeat it all the time so you can remember that. A, B, C, D, A, F, G, uh, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, O, O. Sometimes I pronounce it O. In words many times actually but when I call it when I say when I have to spell something when I say the uh, the name of the letter I have to say O with an open O like in the word occhio it means I okay occhio how many rules in this simple word okay our O our vowel okay open perfect Double C, so we have to stay there for a moment. And then I have the H and I, so I won't pronounce that ocho, okay? But we know that the H, okay, in the middle breaks the rule and the C gets back to the pronunciation K. And so it is occhio, occhio, occhio. Many rules, but we already know them. Then P, P, as in piede, foot, okay? Piede, P, P, E, piede. Q, it is cu, okay, in Italian. Cu, just as easy. And the phonetic alphabet, you find it like this, uh, with a K and a W, so to say cu. It's not Q, as in English. Uh, it's it's a um, okay. It's a cool like a, a K and a U together, as in the word painting or picture, which is quadro. After a Q, okay, we always have to put the vowel U, which is U in Italian. Okay, it is compulsory. You can't put anything else. You have absolutely to put the U sound after it. It's a rule, okay? If you don't put it, it's not, um, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a grammar mistake. Then, uh, the R sound, we talked about that a lot because this is one of the things that no native speakers can't really um, pronounce it's a great difficulty and uh, I know that uh, they have to repeat it again and again and again the R sound is very difficult in Italian well uh, the R is pronounced R R R R well that sound that is almost vibrating okay it's uh, uh, you can you can hear my the top of my tongue vibrating okay on the top of my uh, mouth r this is the correct pronunciation then obviously if you can't pronounce it like that it doesn't matter at the very beginning but anyway um try not to pronounce it in a very british way like r okay 
or uh, in a very uh, French way, uh, like uh, pro, okay, uh, which we call in Italian R mosha, okay, because there are some people who can't really pronounce that R sound in the correct way also here in Italy. But anyway, try try to um it's 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 something you have to try again and again like a sort of a training for your tongue okay for the muscles of your mouth because pronunciation is a matter of using the muscles of your mouth in the correct way until they get used to that specific sound and uh, so in this case you just have to try again and again you can emphasize it a lot of, of, at, at first and you can say R, okay, in this way, then when you pronounce words, try not to emphasize that too much because it becomes very Spanish, okay? Their R is stronger than ours, okay? So uh, then when you pronounce it, try to make it as sweet as possible. Uh, the word I've chosen here is rete, Rete, it means net, and it is something that we use a lot because we are on the internet right now, okay? So, rete is not just a physical net that we use for fishing or anything, but it's also the net, okay, we've got online. So, rete, rete. But we have used this sound a lot when we talked about greetings, for example. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, good morning, okay, or goodbye, arrivederci, arrivederci, do you remember? Goodbye, arrivederci, we talked about that a lot because we have a double R there and so that sound is even more emphasized, is even stronger, you can really hear that arrivederci, you try then step by step, no problems. Uh, so, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, 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 okay, the letter of my name, Sara, <laughs> okay, S, uh, the word I've chosen here is sole, which is sun, okay, pronunciation is exactly the same as in English, uh, in, this, in some cases we also have another way to pronounce S, yes, and it is Z, Z, like uh, in caso, case, okay, uh, but okay, anyway, uh, in the well, letter we've got in the alphabet is S, S. Then T, T, we talked uh, about that already, um, T, the T sound, T-E, uh, is also quite particular because it is different from the British T. In Italian it's not T, but it is T, T. Okay, not ch, ch. In English it is similar, like, a, well, it is like a T together with the C, ch, okay. In Italian, no, there is no C there, it's just T, T, T. Also in this case you tap, you use the, 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 the top of your, of your tongue and you uh, hit the, um, the, the, the back side of your front teeth, okay. T, 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 T. That's why it's called also dental because you use your teeth to, to pronounce it. Ti, ti, t, tanto, tanto, it means very or much. Okay, we also mentioned in my last videos tutto, tutto, which means everything or all. Okay, also in this case tutto, tutto, you have T at the very beginning and then a double T. Okay, tutto, tutto. So you may notice that I stay there for a moment with my with my voice. A B C D E F G H I L M N O P Q R S T U U U. It's not U. It is U. Written like this, like a W in the phonetic alphabet. We already mentioned that because we said that it is always together with Q. Uh, the word I've written here is. Unico, it's like unique. Unique, it's the same. U, unico, unico, this is quite easy. Then V, 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 it's quite easy. Uh, the word is via, via, it is a street, okay, it is used for addresses. So you may find it via and the name of the 
of the street, okay, <laughs> which is the address, via. And then the final uh, letter of the Italian alphabet, which is Zeta, Zeta, Z, Zeta, Zeta. I've chosen a, a word that exists in, it, in English as well, and it is zebra in English, so you can hear the difference of the pronunciations. So it's not a zebra in Italian, but it is zebra, 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 zebra. Also in this case, the zeta, same as s, can have two different pronunciations, z and z. Okay, but in this case, okay, for the alphabet we pronounce it uh, zeta and it is ze zebra, 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 z z zebra. Now all these letters here, <laughs> which belong to the British alphabet, uh, wouldn't actually belong to the Italian alphabet. So uh, when we use them, because obviously we use them also for uh, English words we've got in our languages or for other reasons, then we have to pronounce them. Now, nowadays, most of the times we pronounce them uh, using the British names, uh, the, the English names of the letters, but there are also Italian versions and uh, old-fashioned people or maybe uh, well, not so young people could eventually still use these names for these letters or sometimes when you say why they don't understand and so you add the Italian name to make them understand which, which letter you're actually meaning. So now I'm teaching you, I'm telling you the Italian names for those letters that don't belong to our alphabet but if you have to mention them we have to know their names. So. This here, which is a J, okay, most of the times say J and people understand, but if we don't, un if they don't understand, we have to add the Italian name, which is E, E like, like this, like the vowel E, lunga, 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 it means long, it's like a long E, okay, that's the translation. So this is E lunga. Then the key, the key, uh, the K uh, is also, uh, well, normally people understand K, but uh, the, mm, the name, okay, is Kappa, Kappa, it is Kappa. Then the X, uh, the X, the X is pronounced X with E at the beginning and not A, X. If you say X-ray, people wouldn't understand because we say X-ray, we say raggi, it means rays, X. Hmm? So X. This is quite common because uh, sometimes you have also to use it uh, while, uh, um, while on, te on tests uh, or exams or things like this. So put an X, we say, okay, put an X. Uh, scrivi una X, metti una X. Uh, then this is the Y and uh, we pronounce it Y. The name in this case uh, comes from the ancient Greek, okay, because this letter comes from the ancient Greek alphabet actually. So the name is Y. If you are German, pay attention because you also have the same name for this letter here, but you pronounce it Y because in the ancient Greek that letter was pronounced U, okay, and so you use that original sound. In, Ita in Italy we don't do that, we pronounce it as an E and so we say Y with the E at the beginning. And the W, okay, the W, um, I think that almost everybody knows now that uh, W is a W, but anyway, um, we call it doppia, which means double, V or doppia V. V is uh, uh, the V here. But in this case, with the W, we tend to say doppia V with the final U. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it depends on, on who is talking at the moment, but we call it also like that, okay? Anyway, these words, this, sorry, these letters wouldn't exist in our alphabet, but we could need to use them anyway. Now, uh, very important, 
sounds, two sounds, then I'm done for today. <laughs> so, uh, two sounds that you find a lot in Italian and most of the time foreign people are completely puzzled okay, in front of these sounds and they can't pronounce them. But actually, they're not so difficult. You just have to understand and then to practice again and again as the R sound, that's the same thing. So the first one is this one here. This is an article, plural, okay? Uh, this is used also in many words. It is the sound L. 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 This is the way you will find this sound written, okay, in the phonetic alphabet. L. You, you, we use it a lot. In my previous video, we talked about the expression ti voglio bene, I care about you, ti voglio. We use it also for the pronoun of the third person singular, he, which is egli. So you already know many words that contain this, this sound. The way to pronounce that is not very easy because you have to do many things at the same time. So basically you uh, move your tongue backwards and uh, the back side of your tongue is between your back teeth okay and when you're in that position you let the air flow okay blow okay and go outside it's not l it's not an l no it's not the e it's not like in this case voglio okay which is ti voglio bene i care about you it's not voglio no it's wrong it's not voglio no also not you have to put your tongue okay to make your tongue larger and to put the two sides of your tongue okay between your back teeth and then try to make the air go through that the, 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 uh, the tongue has to be backwards in that case. Okay, sometimes you could feel some little bubbles, okay, in the back of your mouth. That's correct, that's a sign you're doing it right, okay. So try to make bubbles at the very beginning. That you, obviously, you don't have to do that anymore, but for the very beginning, you can try to do that, okay. Um, attention, this sound exists only when you have G, L and E and I, well, if I pronounce the alphabet in English it is G, L, I if, it, if I pronounce the alphabet in Italian, because we know, okay, the letters now, it is G, L, E with E at the end if you don't have E at the end, you don't have to do G it's just GL as in English, okay uh, example the word English which is inglese it's like like this okay you may notice you have gl g and l but you have a here you don't have e so you don't have to produce this sound here you just pronounce it inglese as in English only if you have the e then you have the sound it is which is also uh, um, an article, uh, for example, gli animali, the animals, gli animali. We'll see articles, okay, singular, plural, etc., etc. But in this case, okay, you can just use it for, for practice. Gli, gli, gli animali. The other sound here, which is a sound you also uh, have in uh, in uh, in Spanish, but uh, sorry, written in a completely different way, is the G N sound. And in the phonetic alphabet, in the IPA, okay, tab, you find written like this. Now it is uh, <laughs> you find it in a lot of uh, um, words and also words uh, um, that mean food food that you have also abroad and pronounce a lot and pronounce in a terrible way forgive me i love you i love you i really love you but the way you pronounce it is horrible like for example the word lasagna 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 alla bolognese 
you have it twice also in bolognese you have gn okay it's not lasagna it's not bolognese no it's wrong a bolognese or something it is lasagna nya 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 alla bolognese bolognese nyese okay uh, you see my nose here Nye. try to do it like this for the first time okay Nye. Nye. okay so g and n pronounced together Nye. and you have to feel the air that blows out of your nose okay Nye. okay so uh, try to uh, practice that a lot because you use it a lot in my next video i'll talk about a few words that you've got uh, abroad and you use commonly but you pronounce it in the wrong way and so we'll try to fix it together <laughs> okay so let's start with this first okay homework for the next time okay try to take this word and pronounce it until you can say nye, lasagne, nye, nye. okay lasagna lasagna alla bolognese lasagna alla bolognese okay well i promised you that i would have moved away okay from my whiteboard so you can screenshot eventually if you want to uh, uh, maybe to keep okay the old tab together or if you want to see that maybe on your computer so to make it maybe larger okay so since you always ask okay for my <laughs> schemes and things so i always try to move away and to let you uh, watch all of it together well, that's it for today. We talked about uh, many different sounds and pronunciation rules. I hope they're all clear to you. Obviously, there are more things to say, but we'll, we'll go through that uh, step by step, okay? It's uh, a lot for today. Um, I hope you have found it interesting as always. So if you did, please like my video okay thumbs up and share okay if there are any other friends who'd like to know more about italian and about uh, an italian the italian pronunciation from an italian teacher and so thank you so very much for following grazie mille grazie di cuore i wait for you vi aspetto vi aspetto per la mia prossima uh, lezione so in my following in my next lesson okay grazie di cuore a presto ciao